welcome to my studio. Come on in. This is both where I make artwork and display my artwork in downtown Raleigh. So this is my works in progress side. You can see sketches, scraps of material, all the behind the scenes of the creative process. And then on this wall over here, I have all of my completed pieces. So this is where the creative magic happens. I'm really influenced by architecture. My parents grew up um, and had their own architecture studio up in Maryland. And so growing up on the drafting table, using a straight edge ruler to do sketches when I was five years old in the studio, I've always had those architectural influences in my work. So finding that exploration between gestural forms and geometric lines has always been a fascination for me. And even when I try to stray away in different styles, get other influences, it always ends up bringing me back. We grew up going to Frank Lloyd Wright houses as vacation, really always looking at those sharp geometric lines. I've always loved seeing his connection between geometric architecture and the nature of the surroundings definitely inevitably influenced my style of work. So like in these pieces, for example, of course all of the warm, active colors are in the center and then the cool, calming color blocks are used to shape around it. But then the geometric lines break the barrier between the two and inevitably create a relationship between both the colors as well as the imposing gestural marks versus solid blocks of color. People have different interactions with each of the colors. For me, the warm colors really ignite that energy. It's very aggressive and fiery. You're really energized by it, and I think that's also emphasized by the way this mark making is done. And then the cool colors are inherently calming. You think of the sky, think of the ocean, those cooling elements, and there's less contrast between one tone to the next when compared to a super bright neon yellow and then a super dark burnt red. Drawing is a huge part of my creative process. I love starting with old fashioned pen and paper drawings. And so this was actually a practice that has always been present in my creative process, but I really leaned into in 2020 when I wanted to recommit to my creative process. And so by having um, a daily drawing, one drawing every single day, I was able to then create those ideas that later became future pieces. You'll see some are more intricate than others. Some days after a long day of work, you'd said, you know what? A circle, that's my creative output. <laughs> We've got a circle. But all of those fuel the concepts of my finished work. One thing for me is when I do all of my paintings, I use palette knives primarily, and that's how I get very gestural marks. I like it because I feel like there's an element where I'm losing control of the acrylic paint. You really get a beautiful rough texture in the painting themselves when you build it up. And so for me, gestural marks really document the push and pull of pressure and power as objects relate to each other. For a rigid mark, I feel like it's an interruption. I feel like, especially in my work for straight rigid lines, they often disrupt a current shape, a block of color, or divide two opposing elements within a piece. This is also part of my process. There's a lot of taping. I also have a huge tape mountain, as the kids have called it behind you, of all my used tape up on that wall. <laughs> So I often have multiple panels going at one time. That way you can really explore um, one, multiple compositions, one piece may inspire another one. And also logistically, while one is drying, you can put paint on the other one and have multiple going at one time, which is very helpful. <laughs> Making, again, effective use of your time and time in which you're in the studio. So these are two paintings within my Sunrise series. They're 36 by 36, acrylic on panel. This one is named, Does This Change Everything? And this is named, Am I a Regret or a Fond Memory? But these two specifically, I also explored other variables of exploring how line interacted within the composition. So a lot of them are stark white lines, but I also have transparent lines as well. I love those moments within a painting that you may not see right away, 
but when the light catches it correctly, you think, is there a line there? Is it not? I think also conceptually it plays really well in terms of the boundaries that we often have in our society with each other in relationships and that for ourselves that we may not always be aware of or that later become apparent in hindsight. So a lot of these lines are actually stopped by a clear boundary. A lot of them also fluctuate in and out of your eyesight in these piece over here. And so a stark boundary may often dissolve over time or be forced to make its presence known over time, which I think as us as people in, in the human experience is a super prevalent conversation today too. So I'm definitely a firm believer that original artwork can really activate a space. A larger theme within a lot of the pieces that I create, and really I feel like my mission as an artist is to transform those mundane moments into memorable experiences. That may be as simple as a bookmark that casts color shadows onto the page while you're reading at the beach. It could be an original painting in your home that becomes a story when you have guests come over. Or it could be a big mural in a community space that that you remember taking pictures in front of or sharing memory with your family. Each of these things that really transform a seemingly mundane moment of walking through a parking lot into a memorable experience that activate communication between people in our community, I feel like that's a huge role in which artists can really lift up our community around us and energize conversation.